Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a Spanish science fiction thriller film called The Last Days. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The premise of the movie is set in a post-apocalyptic society. After a mysterious disease spreads across all the world, people become extremely agoraphobic, meaning that they develop a fear of the outdoors. The disease takes over so quickly that the people who are outside when it happens die instantly, while the survivors stay wherever they are. It is currently three months after the disease took over, and a cure has still not been found. The world has collapsed as people stopped coming out of their houses. An office worker named Mark was at work when the pandemic took over. Ever since then, he has not been able to return home to his wife Julia. At the beginning of the movie, Mark scavenges through his office building for food. Alongside him, his co-workers are busy going about their day, as they have for several months now. He tries to use the phone, but as expected, it doesn't work. A view of the city through the window shows us the destruction caused by the pandemic. Mark looks at the empty streets while eating a piece of bread. His colleague asks him to come downstairs because it is his turn to work. For the past month, they have been making a tunnel that they can use to go places since they cannot walk outside. As Mark hits the wall, he creates a hole in it and finds out that the other end meets a subway tunnel. Later, everyone is being given rationed food supplies. While waiting in line, Mark sees his former boss, Enrique, hiding a GPS in his pocket. When he asks him what the GPS is for, Enrique dismisses the matter. A flashback reveals that before the pandemic, Mark was working as a computer engineer. One day, Enrique calls him into the office and asks him about a deadline that Mark had missed earlier. He threatens Mark with possible termination from the job if he isn't efficient enough the next time. Mark works overtime that night and ignores the calls from his wife, Julia. He returns home late to see Julia has already had dinner. The couple talks about their plan to have a baby soon. Mark doesn't want to rush the subject while he is having trouble at work, but Julia is impatient. They have had several arguments about the matter in the past. At night, Mark cannot fall asleep, so he watches the news. There's a story about a 16-year-old teen who commits suicide after staying inside his house for more than six months. He had severe agoraphobia, but his father didn't understand or believe him, which led him to commit suicide. The following day, in the office, everyone discusses the teen's tragic death. Mark notices that one of his colleagues, Rovira, is wearing the same clothes that he did for the last few days. It is almost as if he hasn't returned home. At the time, Mark didn't understand what Rovira's problem was, but looking back at it now, he was one of the first people to get infected by the disease. In the present, Mark and Enrique are in Enrique's office, secretly discussing the GPS. Since the phone's GPS has stopped working, Mark needs the device to reach his apartment. Enrique requests Mark not tell the others about the device, or else they will probably steal it in the time of crisis. Mark reveals that he has stolen supplies formerly owned by Rivera. Using both of their tools, they can partner up and help each other reach their destinations. Enrique also needs help in going to Via Olympia, but he doesn't specify his reasons. Enrique is initially dismissive of Mark's idea and declines partnering with him, but Mark blackmails him into helping him search for Julia. The two set out into the subway system and start their journey. Some hours later, they reach the subway station, which has now become home to hundreds of people. All of a sudden, a pickpocket snatches Enrique's bag full of supplies and runs away. They chase after him and reach a secluded area with the pickpocket's gang members. The thugs make the two kneel down, wanting to steal all of their supplies. Fortunately for Enrique and Mark, the power goes out right on time, and they attack the group of thugs. In the fight, Enrique kills their leader. Although worried that Enrique will continue without him, Mark is relieved to find that he is willing to continue their partnership. Another flashback then shows us Mark getting ready to go to the office, unaware of what is coming. On his way there, he enters his neighbor's home, which is filled with trash that seems to have accumulated over the course of months. It is clear that he has also been infected, but has no clue what is going on. At work, the officials find out that Rovira has been living in his office for several weeks. They kick him out of the building as he begs for his life. People think he is being too dramatic, but as soon as he is taken outdoors, he gets a seizure and dies. Following that, 
Mark goes through his belongings and sees that Rovira has accumulated food and other supplies. At night, Mark tells Julia that something is happening around them that they are not aware of yet. The incidents bother Mark, but he doesn't know what he can do about them. Julia hugs him, but believes that he is worrying for no reason. They make love before going to sleep. Back in the present, Mark wakes up dreaming of her. He gets worried when he sees no one around, but is relieved when Enrique approaches him moments later. The two continue their journey through the subway tunnel. Mark inquires why Enrique wants to go to Via Olympia, but he again dismisses the conversation. He has also been collecting seeds of several fruits throughout the journey, which Mark thinks is weird. After walking for some miles, they find the opening to the sewer system. They jump into the sewer and use the GPS to get to the building that Mark lived in. To get out of the sewer, they will have to blow up a gas cylinder and make a hole through the ground. They miss the first two tries, but are eventually able to create the explosion. Mark finally gets to his room, but sees that it is occupied by a strange man. At first, he thinks that the man has abducted his wife, but it turns out that he and his family were working in the building. When they got infected, they couldn't return home, so they took shelter in his apartment. On being asked about Julia, they claim that the apartment was empty when they came in. Enrique looks around the kitchen and finds that the family has caught birds for food. He also collects corn kernels and puts them inside the bag with the other seeds. Meanwhile, Mark finds a hospital paper with Julia's ultrasound report in it. It is then revealed that she was pregnant when they last met. We are shown yet another flashback where Mark and Julia are watching the news about the disease spreading at an exponential rate. The condition is now known as the panic and several people have already died because of it. Julia brings up the topic of having children, and they, yet again, get into an argument. While walking to work, Mark notices the streets and the train are emptier than usual. People at work are also listening to the news, where the experts claim the cause of the panic is just mass hysteria. Mark feels guilty for arguing with Julia, but when he calls, her friend Andrea picks up the phone. Wanting to talk to Julia, he leaves to go home. However, as soon as he steps outside, he falls to the ground, panicking. Mark has also been infected by the disease. Using his plot armor, he somehow manages to drag himself inside the building. Back in the present, it suddenly starts to rain. Enrique and Mark collect water with the help of a curtain and a bucket. Everyone in the apartment does the same as well. At night, the two collect as many supplies as they can and leave for their next destination. Mark wants to go to the mall that Julia used to work in, but Enrique says that they are going to Via Olympia next. Since they have reached his apartment building, he no longer wants to accompany Mark. They get into a fist fight, which ends almost immediately after they accidentally break the flashlight. Enrique then reveals that he wants to go to the hospital that his father is in. After finding him, he promises to give the GPS to Mark, so he accepts the deal. The two continue the journey and end up in an abandoned church at the end of the night. They find a lighter and use it to light a fire, hoping to have a cozy night. However, their plan is ruined when they are attacked by a wild bear. It attacks Enrique and is about to maul him to death, but Mark manages to kill it at the last second. Following that, they cook the bear's flesh and devour it. As they eat, they talk about their lives before the pandemic. It turns out Enrique's only family is his father, who he loves dearly. Mark accuses Enrique of not paying attention to his flashback sequences. As they get to know more about each other, they start to bond. The following day, they continue the journey through the sewers to the hospital. On their way, they meet another group of survivors, who claim that they have heard rumors about the hospital being burned to the ground. Enrique freaks out and runs to the top of a building. There, through a glass window, he sees that the hospital has in fact burned. Since his father was paralyzed and was on the fifth floor, he loses all hope of his survival. With no one to love or to look after, Enrique loses the will to live and tries to jump from the window. But Mark saves him. Enrique now wants Mark to continue looking for Julia on his own. He even hands the man his bag of seeds, saying that his child will need them in the future. After an emotional goodbye, they part ways, and Mark makes his way to the mall that Julia worked in. He reaches the mall without much problem and finds several dead bodies lying on the ground. People there seem to have fought for their lives. He enters the shop that Julia worked in, only to find its owner dead on the floor. Fortunately for him, 
Julia's friend Andrea has written a note saying that they are at the supermarket. On his way there, he meets another group of survivors. They are reluctant to let him in, but they agree to see if someone named Julia is in their group. Before they can get back to him, however, a rival group attacks them. The ensuing fight causes most of the people from both sides to die. Amidst the chaos, Mark meets Andrea, who tells him that Julia has gone to the gynecologist after Mark ended the call that day. They try to run away, but Andrea is killed by falling debris. Following that, a man attacks Mark and is about to kill him, but Enrique arrives at the right moment and saves him. But just afterwards, Enrique is stabbed in the chest. He hides his injury from Mark and offers to join him to search for Julia. They walk through the tunnel and end up in an auditorium. Mark runs to one of the upper floors of the building and sees Julia in the opposite building through the window. Julia also notices him and is overjoyed. Mark quickly runs back to tell Enrique about her, but finds him bleeding to death. Enrique urges him to go find Julia and live his life happily before passing away. Now, Julia and Mark are at the entrance of two opposite buildings. Mark takes the chance and runs across the street to meet her. His head gets lighter and his ears start to bleed, but his plot armor prevails and he manages to get to his wife in the end. The two finally reunite and look at each other with tears of joy. Some months later, Julia gives birth to a healthy boy. They use the seeds that Enrique had given Mark to create a greenhouse. As their kid grows up, he takes his first step into the outside world, proving that he is immune to agoraphobia. When he is a teenager, several other kids his age come to take him to rebuild civilization. The movie ends as Mark and Julia watch their son walk away with his new group of friends.